out because I have no choice. But um, we're gathered here over 50 years after Martin Luther King Jr.'s assassination, still fighting for a right to social freedom, for that unalienable right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness for the right to love and nurture children without the fear of losing them to a racist system. We're still fighting for equality promised in the Civil Rights Act of 1964. We're still fighting against discrimination on the basis of our race and color. We gather today in protest of our oppressors, oppressors that use our children to justify their exploitation of our families. Instead of losing dogs and that's like they did on black children and parents back in 1963 in Birmingham, Alabama, ACS rebranded New York City's children and what I personally call New York City's black and brown children send case workers every single day to knock on our doors. Right now, on Martin Luther King Jr. Day, case workers are pounding on black and brown families' doors. Let me tell you a little about myself. I grew up in the Caribbean. My first job was teaching. As a teacher, I loved every one of my students. But there was one child that kept me up at night. Let's call her Annie. Annie was 11 years old. You see, Annie missed many days of school. So because I was her teacher, I went to find out. I went to her home to find out why she was truant. Her father basically told me most days he couldn't afford a babysitter to take care of Annie's younger sister while he worked, so he kept Annie at home to take care of her. Because it takes a village to raise a child, I told Annie's father to send Annie to my house every afternoon after he got home from work for me to teach her everything she missed in school that day. And to basically give her a break to play with her peers and, you know, just be a child. For years, I carried Annie in my heart. I wish there were ways I could help her family, maybe get them a babysitter, some social activities for Annie, some resources to support, support the family. When I migrated to New York, graduated college, I learned that there's a state, state agency that claims to support children and struggling families like Annie's. It seemed like honorable and fulfilling work, so I applied. I imagine having a plethora of services to help families and leaving every child in every home better than I found them. I started working at ACS in 2017. I quickly learned that my work wasn't honorable. Instead, it was exploitive and oppressive. My very first day seemed pretty straightforward. A special education student missed over 30 days of days. So education and neglect allegations were called in by her attendance teacher against her mother. When I first visited the home, the mother's color drained from her face. She told me she couldn't afford to have an ACS case because she could lose the job she just got. Also, the family owed back rent because of the mother's brief period of unemployment. And they were ordered by housing court to pay part of their arrears along with their full monthly rent. I interviewed everyone in the household and we kept a school meeting. And I quickly realized that the child was stopping at a park and on her school route and returning home when she knew her parents had left for work. The parents said the school never notified them of their child's absences. And school staff basically said they didn't notice the child's absence. How don't you notice a special education student? A child that was slated to receive speech and other individual services at least twice per week absences. And why do you call an educational neglect against a mother if you never told her daughter was missing school? Yes. Nevertheless, the parents, school staff, and I developed a plan to ensure the child's attendance for the rest of the school year. I was ready to unfound allegations to leave the family a little better than I found them. But my supervisor said the case had to be indicated. She argued for a parental all-knowing, asked if I, if I would know if my children were missing school, and used reasoning and terms that she, used reasoning and terms she touted were based on her years of experience working with the agency. Experience I didn't have as yet. But nothing she said could justify taking that woman's job from her. The job she needed to keep a roof over her children's head. Wasn't I hired 
to protect children and the integrity of families? Well, as Nietzsche says, all things are subject to interpretation. Whichever interpretation prevails at a given time is a function of power and not truth. So the case was indicated because the power, my supervisor, interpreted a parent's child's and teacher's word to justify an indi indication. Luckily for the mother and me, because how could I live with myself knowing I just sentenced children to homelessness? Luckily, the mother snagged a better paying job. As my time with the agency progressed, the cases became more ludicrous. I often investigated false reports made by ex-lovers, feuding friends and families, landlords and neighbors, an abusive husband, a police officer called in false allegations against his wife because she refused to tell him where she was. Any fish can buy school teachers and school staff are often called on the racist power of the state for vindication or revenge. I investigated a case so abhorrent where a group of educators, grown professional women, accused the grandmother of sexually assaulting her grandchild with a cane because the, the mother reported to their school principal that her autistic child was returning home with unexplained marks and bruises. I investigated reports made by terrorists whose suspicions could have been disp dissipated if they just communicated with a parent. In one of my cases, a teenager showed up to therapy with a mark. The therapist asked him how he got that mark. He said he didn't know. The mother said she saw therapy for her child because he was always in fights and often got suspended from school. He fought to appear the day of the therapy. Words of this empowered mother said still haunts me. She said, I've gotten so many cases because of this child's behavior. I reach out to help, but all I get is cases. I swear my only job is to keep my son alive. This therapist and other mandated reporters never fail to remind me that according to agent ACS policies, they couldn't ask questions and that it was my job to investigate and determine whether the suspicions were true. Safe Horizon, community support agencies, and even ACS. I investigate the cases where parents reach out to hospital social workers, police officers, Safe Horizon, community support agencies, and even ACS for support because they acknowledge they couldn't meet a particular need of their child. And then they were reported for child neglect. In one of my cases, my father went to his local hospital because he was an alcoholic and needed help recovering. The alcohol and substance abuse con counselor called a case on him. I asked the reporter, did you ask if he's a primary caretaker of the children? Did he tell you he was drunk and beats his wife and children? Did he tell you that he drinks until he's belligerent in the presence of his children? I couldn't understand the reasoning behind the report when the father acknowledged he had a problem and sought help fighting his demons. I investigated one mother's 13th case. She got 13 cases because she had two autistic children and every time she reached out for help, the people that were supposed to help her called in cases against her. She started therapy and told the therapist she was overwhelmed. The therapist called in a case on her. Her old autistic child almost killed his younger brother. She took the child to the hospital a few days. Hospital. After a few days, the hospital staff, her, she had to, staff told her she had to take him home. The mother said she feared for her and her youngest child life and asked for referrals for an appropriate program for him. The hospital called a case in against her, stating that she failed to plan for her child's care. Most of the cases were called in by preventive service workers subcontracted by ACS to help the family. I wondered if the system was failing her and her children. I quickly realized that the system was doing exactly what it was meant to do. That is, to generate cases against struggling families. The most heart rendering of it all were the mothers that were taken from their parents' as children. One mother who was taken from her father when she was six years old told me all she had was a certificate for a plot of land her father bought her in the burial ground. Her father said that if he couldn't be with his children while they were alive, 
who be with them when they were all dead. Most of these women were estranged from their families. They had no support, no high school diplomas, and were often in abusive relationships. I grieved because the city took these women from their parents and sentenced them to life of poverty and trauma. I witnessed the dehumanization of our children. Little boys and girls would cover and hold their private parts as I felt like a correction officer stripped searching inmates because ACS policy dictates every child's body must be assessed for suspicious marks and bruises, even if the allegations don't include excessive corporal punishment or other forms of abuse. And as we all know, very few of the allegations include abuse. ACS would, would readily tell you that most of their allegations are for, for neglect. Black and brown children can't have accidents or hurt themselves while playing or find themselves by making mistakes like white adolescents are encouraged to without someone calling in allegations against a parent. I know y'all heard about the school to prison pipeline. Well, there's a school to ACS and an ACS to child trafficking pipeline. Educators are responsible for more than 40% of the reports that are made to ACS. The traffickers know that once the agency takes the boys and girls from their parents, they no longer care about them. So these traffickers take these poor boys and girls to different states to sell their still developing bodies. Traffickers know that all the agency would do is put out a missing child report, issue an arrest warrant for the child, and forget about the child. I met a little girl at Nicholas Capetta Children's Center. That's where they warehouse our children until they can give them to foster parents or group homes. Within a few months, she ran away and was stripping in a strip club in New Jersey. About a year after, she was still a child, pregnant with a child. I met young mothers with every chronic stress-related illness, anxiety, depression, migraines, high blood pressure, ulcers, cardiovascular disease, because they're forever in the fight or flight mode. They're hypervigilant because they know a caseworker can at any time walk into their homes and snatch their children from them. You see, when you're aware that there's a state agency that will persecute you because you have black or brown children, you live in fear of that agency. When you have to choose between going to court or doing mandated services and going to work, it wears you down. Having to lay on a bed without knowing what's happening to the little person God bless you with impedes sleep. I met fathers that were seriously considering leaving their families because they did not want to be persecuted. I, investi I investigated a case where the father was accused of hitting his wife because she didn't look at any of the neighbors when she rode the elevator and hitting his autistic son because he yelled and jumped when he played roadblocks. When the allegations sunk in, the young father asked me in disbelief, so wait, the person said I'm abusing both my wife and child? I told him yes, he said, damn, I gotta get a hell up out of here. I told him he ain't going nowhere. I couldn't bear witness to ACS destroying another black family. ACS hid the strength within black and brown families. Another couldn't figure out why he couldn't get a security job. I told him he's listed as an abuser on the statewide central register and that dis disqualifies him from working around children. I showed him how to write a letter to appeal the findings. He still had to wait months for the agency to determine whether it was going to overturn the neglect indication. Many evenings, I sat in kitchen and living rooms listening to stories of despair from disempowered and untrodden parents as they cooked dinner and nurtured their children. Look at this beauty. It's my good luck charm. I carry it with me everywhere I go. It's seen better days. It's been tossed around in my pocketbook. And I've had to wash it a few times because lipstick and lotion got on it. But it's still together. I bought this bowl from a young mother. She just wanted to generate some income so her husband could work less. She went on YouTube and she learned this skill. 
and every afternoon, after she picked up her children from school, she stood on the corner with her plastic container filled with an assortment of these beauties. I keep this in testament of the resilience of struggling and persecuted, yet amazingly selfless, nurturing and loving women, men and children I worked with every day. In the office, I asked questions, trying to understand the oppressive system. I sent emails to the Commissioner Hansel and tried to advocate for the families I served the best way I could. I tried to understand why I was only sent to black and brown homes when I served the white community with much more white children than black and brown children. I mean, I investigated hundreds of neglect allegations, yet only five of those allegations were against white families. I searched high and low for the racial breakdown of the cases the agency investigates every year. It's appalling that ACS, a government agency, has data for the racial breakdown of children in foster care and juvenile delinquent center, centers, but no data for the racial breakdown of allegations the agency investigates what? every year. What? What? They don't want the public to know that black and brown children are overrepresented in foster care and juvenile delinquent centers because over 90% of the parents that are persecuted by ACS are black and brown. You see, you can't have white children in foster care and juvenile delinquent centers where ACS holds black and brown parents to a standard of parenting white parents aren't held to. His workers readily go to Go to go to white his workers rarely go to white doors and scrutinize their families the way we're scrutinized. I wanted to understand how mandated reporters, people that are supposed to protect children and families, lie on children and families and be protected by ACS. Commissioner Hansel and my superiors never answered my emails and verbal questions, but the numbers and my experience provided the answer. I soon realized that I couldn't fight the devil in hell. The case that made me re resign was against her young mother. She grew up in foster care. Many days when I went to her home, she lay in a dark room. Her children quietly played in another room because they knew their mommy just needed a little quiet time to ease her migraine. Despite everything this young woman went through, she still managed to attend college. She was resilient personified. She was one semester away from becoming a teacher when she got a case. I diligently worked her case. I took pictures. I interviewed everyone. I clarified what wasn't immediately apparent. I couldn't prove that she neglected her children. In my absence, my manager indicated a case against the mother. I went to her and asked why. I pleaded that the mother grew up in foster care and that she was one semester away from becoming a teacher and that if the case was indicated against her, she'd be placed on the statewide central register and she wouldn't be able to work with children. My manager said she wasn't going to change her determination because all we needed was some credible evidence to indicate the case and my documentation showed some. She couldn't tell me what justified that indication because my documentation was tight. So I walked because Frederick Douglass, Maya Angela, and James Baldwin didn't write in debate for someone to use my words to destroy my sister's dreams. Harriet Tubman then lead the slaves out to slavery for me to deliver them to the oppressors. Claudia Calvin and Rosa Parks didn't sit on that bus for my brothers and sisters to sit in courtrooms. Yes, yes, yes. Those four adolescent girls in Alabama, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King Jr., Eric Garner, Sandra Bland, Trayvon Martin, Tamir Rice, and so many others weren't murdered for me to destroy the hopes and dreams of my sisters, brothers, and their children. Mr. Commissioner, your agency spends big bucks to dehumanize black and brown families. After Mel Stapson's murder at the hands of, murder at the hands of his stepmother, the agency chose to punish us by making the public associate Mel's death with every black and brown parent and deem us all murder-prone savages. Just to increase reports and secure additional funding for your oppressive agency.
images of black and brown children urged the public to report any suspicions they had of maltreatment. Over 50 languages I spoke in New York City, yet ad campaigns are only in English and Spanish. No French, no Russian, no Yiddish, no, po no Polish, only the languages black and brown people speak. Of course, there were places and places where, where poor people frequent, like check cashing locations and bus stops. What the commissioner didn't tell the public is that two years prior, they removed Mills from his biological mother. Enough children with ACS cases have died for ACS to know that policing does not save children. ACS policing kills black and brown yes. children. Yes, it does. But it's not about preserving our children's life. It's about the business of child welfare in New York City. You demonize black and brown people to generate cases, impoverish the families you investigate. When the impoverishment leads to a death, your agency secures more funding to police and impoverish more black and brown families. The cycle continues and goes on for generations. If any of you go to the agency's Facebook page right now, you'll see all photos of black and brown children. The white people are Commissioner Hansel and other agency employees. The only drawing that includes a white person is a drawing of a white adult extending their hand to a black child. That's because ACS continues to propagate the white supremacy and the white savior complex. Complex idea that black parents are savages that need to be taught by white people how to raise their children and that white people need to save black and brown children. It's a story white men first told to coach James Baldwin when they put guns and Bibles to our ancestors' head and brought them chained in filthy shapes to, America, to build America's wealth. It's a story that, that was told when barbaric slave owners destroyed our families and sold our children. Our families are still being destroyed and our children are still commodities. White mandated reporters, the agency, and so many others profit from our exploitation. The agency engages in white protectionism because when minorities are disenfranchised from jobs as teachers, doctors, daycare workers, therapists, and even security guards for cases that have very little to do with abuse, these jobs are preserved for white men and white women. Furthermore, this practice ensures that white children don't, don't fall prey to the barbaric system because one thing white people know is that none of their families are perfect, but yet they belong together. What they know about black and brown families is what ACS tells them. ACS tells them that we are savages that need their policing and that if they don't report any suspicions they have of us, they lose their, they'll lose their jobs. You see? No white person is losing their middle class job for a black or brown child. The CARES program is the agency's latest hustle. Commissioner Hansel is big on marketing or exploitation, isn't he? Nothing says ACS CARES like naming the program CARES. Mr. Hansel, if you really cared about us, you'd leave us alone so we could raise yeah, yeah, our yeah, children yeah, like yeah, yeah, you leave our yeah, 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 yeah. Evils have become insufferable 
It's time to abolish ACS. Yeah. Let's give it up for every speaker we had out here today, baby.